Sowing and reaping, Galatians 6, 7. There is a saying, sow a deed, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap character. Sow a character, reap fate. The adage warns, everything you do in life makes a difference to life in general. An individual act forms a habit, a habit forms character, and character affects life in general. In addition, the proverb indicates that everything in life is interconnected. One thing flows from another and another from a third. For example, if you want to be endurance, run long distances and definitely in comfort, you should follow this rule. If you want to run five kilometers comfortably, run 10 kilometers. If you want to run 10 kilometers comfortably, run 20 kilometers. If you want to run 20 kilometers comfortably, run a marathon, 42 kilometers. If you want to run a marathon comfortably, run 100 kilometers. Every action we take, every decision we make, has consequences. Our verse, Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Often people do completely crazy things without even thinking about what might come out of it. They don't think about what the consequences of their actions might be. One day, the world heard a story about two motorists. A thick fog covered a small German town and visibility was very poor. The men were traveling at a low speed, sticking their heads out to get a better look at the road. They collided head-on, literally. Both men sustained injuries. The cars, they say, were not damaged. Or another story. Harry Hoey, one respected member of a law firm in addition to his regular duties, occasionally lectured to students who came to that firm for training. The lawyer was fond of saying that the windows of the Toronto Dominion Center skyscraper were impossible to break. To prove it, he jumped on the glass. Strange act. It's a trick the lawyer has pulled many times, but on July 9, 1993, he was not so lucky. On that day, the window failed. To be more precise, the glass survived, but it fell out of the frame, together with the lawyer. A 38-year-old lawyer fell from the 24th floor and crashed to his death. It might seem funny if it wasn't so sad. The death of a human being is always a tragedy. But it is a far more terrible tragedy when a man dies and loses his precious and immortal soul. He who sows the wind will reap the storm. Few people know that this expression is taken from the Bible and it refers to God's people who have turned away from the Lord and have begun to worship idols. You would think, what's the big deal? We are just living for ourselves, living the way we want to live, not the way God wants us to live. But God tells us in his word, Hosea 8:7, They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stalk has no head, it will produce no flower. Were it to yield grain, foreigners would swallow it up. The worst and most terrible thing that can happen to a person is to lose heaven and the infinite love of God forever. To lose it forever. Our Lord doesn't want that to happen. He loves each of us very much. That's why God sent prophets to the earth, so that people would hear them. Hear the prophecies and turn to God and forsake their sins. That is why God sends missionaries, preachers, and evangelists to cities and countries so that people will hear the good news and turn to God. That is why Jesus Christ shed his holy blood on the cross so that through that blood every man might be cleansed from his sins and receive eternal life. Gospel of John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It was an incredible event in the universe. In order that each one of us might receive forgiveness of sins, 
the King of kings and God of gods shed his holy blood. The Lord Jesus Christ was killed in our place for our sins. Just think about it. How can you be indifferent to that? Is it possible knowing that Almighty God suffered for our sins to live the same old life? To live as if God doesn't exist and nothing happened? Please believe me. God is not to be taken lightly. You can't live as if there will be no rewards or punishments. One cannot live thinking that formal faith is sufficient for salvation. Like, I believe there is a God because I was born in a Christian country. You can't live like this. You can't live as if God doesn't exist. And then, when you die, hope that the rights over the deceased will put everything in order, no matter what his life was like. Don't. God created us in such a way that even our conscience tells us that there is no getting around the law. Sin must be punished. And even if someone shoves their conscience away and doesn't listen to it, the law of sowing and reaping still continues to work. Over and over again, the Lord tries to convince us. Don't try to deceive yourself, much less God. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The laws of God's government cannot be neglected. It's like nature. The law is inexorable. The force of gravity will overturn a man no matter how much he resists. Or, if you stick your hand in a fire, a person will get burned. There is no other way. This we know. But the trouble is, we do not consider that when a person deliberately sins and resists God, the consequences will be incomparably worse than a burn injury. Poor sowing will bring a poor harvest. If a man sows weeds, he's a fool if he expects wheat to sprout. If we sow the wind, we can be sure that sooner or later we will reap the storm. We can see this clearly by the consequences of certain sins. The sin of lust causes sickness in the body. The sin of idolatry leads to cruel and degrading rituals. Sins born of depravity of character are at the root of murder, war, quarrels, and calamities. The sins of the passions, especially drunkenness, drug addiction, gambling addiction cause want, poverty, destruction of the psyche, etc. There are times when the sinner himself is disappointed by the consequences of his behavior, but still does not turn to God. His bitterness corrodes the heart, greed consumes the soul, infidelity destroys comfort, passions shake the spirit. And if a person does not turn to God, does not open his heart to Jesus Christ, he will perish. But let's talk about a good sowing that will bring a good harvest. What are some good seeds we can sow? In relation to God, it is faith and obedience to Him, trust in God. In relation to people, love, truth, justice, friendliness, patience. In relation to oneself, mastery of oneself and one's passions, cleanliness of behavior, etc. What will we reap if we sow the right seeds? Eternal life within us through the Holy Spirit. Eternal life for us in heaven with God forever and ever. And it's our choice. We are the ones who choose what we sow. Imagine a man who collected fine gravel, meticulously dyed it to look like wheat, and sowed it in the fields in the spring, hoping that in the fall he would harvest a crop of wheat like his neighbors. Such a man is a madman. A fool who imagines that by a cheap trick, mocking the creator of nature, he will circumvent his laws. But the same thing, only the punishment will be much heavier if a person sows wickedness today, expecting to reap grace at the end. Sin is not only unprofitable and ruinous, it is deceitful and deceptive. Men are willing to be deceived, and sin deceives and extorts the soul from the sinner. Sin lures with a bright wrapper, but inside that wrapper is poison and intoxicants that destroy not only the body, but also the soul. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. 
What you sow, you will also reap. Just as sin leads to terrible consequences, so the sowing of righteousness will not be a vain labor. Every action done by God's grace and at His direction is alive and fruitful. It may be invisible like a seed in a furrow, but it will inevitably sprout grace. Start sowing the right seed. William Arnott, a 19th century Scottish clergyman said, sight is not able to trace where the seed falls, but if sight fails by faith, and you will soon reap with joy. And in conclusion, the most important thing. The most important question in every person's life is, are your sins forgiven? God wants to forgive you. Jesus Christ died on the cross to take all your guilt, took the punishment for your sins so that you could be forgiven. Jesus rose again on the third day. He conquered death. And today he offers you life. To do this, you just need to admit you are a sinner and ask God to forgive you for all your sins. If you want to repent but do not know how to do it, just say these words. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinful person and ask your forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that you died in my place on the cross and rose again on the third day. May your holy blood shed for my sins cleanse me from all curses and sanctify me. I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, your sins are forgiven. You have become a saved person, born of God. Keep your salvation. Find a Christian church near where you live and become part of that church. Read the Bible because it is God's word to us. Speak in prayer to your Heavenly Father. And don't forget this channel. Listen and take the word of God for you. Amen.